Greetings, my fellow renegades. Many of you first discovered my content when you saw my video in which I built a DIY heat recovery ventilator, or HRV, from Coroplast. I was really excited to see how much interest that video created, and I'm grateful for all of your comments and questions, especially the skeptics, because I learned the most from their critiques. Now I'm gonna talk about my experience using my HRV through the seasons. I built the HRV in the late fall, when the air is really cold and dry in northern New England, US, where I live. My HRV worked amazingly, at supplying my home with fresh air that wasn't too cold during the late fall, winter, and early spring. However, when the late spring and summer came, issues began to arise. In order for you to understand the cause of the issues, I need to briefly explain psychrometrics. Psychrometrics is the science that involves the properties of moist air, which is a mixture of dry air and water vapor, and the processes in which the temperature and or the water vapor content of the mixture are changed. Psychrometrics is complex, but so is every subject if you study it deeply enough, you know what I mean? But for the purposes of this video, I'm gonna try to simplify it. Here goes. The colder the air is, the less water vapor it is capable of holding. Most people know on some level that it's drier when it's cold out, but they haven't fully internalized the concept. Here's an example. Let's say the outdoor air is 32 degrees Fahrenheit and its relative humidity, or RH, is 100%. Sounds pretty humid, right? What happens when that air leaks into your home? Most people would think, well, since the RH of the outdoor air is 100%, you'd be bringing a lot of moisture into your house. See, they'd actually be wrong. Let's say the air inside your home is 70 degrees Fahrenheit. If 32 degree outdoor air with an 100% RH leaks into your home, then it warms up to 70 degrees, its RH would then be 20%. Sounds pretty dry, right? This is because 32 degree air can only hold a small amount of water vapor, around 22 grains per pound. So its RH is 100% when it holds 22 grains per pound of water vapor. In contrast, 70 degree air can hold far more water vapor, around 110 grains per pound. So when air with 22 grains per pound leaks inside and warms up to 70 degrees, it becomes apparent that it doesn't actually contain very much moisture at all. 22 grains per pound of water only fills 20% of the holding capacity of 70 degree air. So all this is to say that cold air is dry air. So that is why when it was colder than around 55 to 60 degrees Fahrenheit, my HRV functioned great and caused no issues. The higher the outdoor temperature rose above 60 degrees, and therefore the more moisture it held, the more issues began to arise. Welcome to the Healthy Home Guide. This is a place where I share practical, budget-friendly tips for creating a safe and healthy home. Whether the word home refers to your house or your body. Please go ahead and like this video and subscribe because it causes the YouTube algorithm to direct its metallic awareness to my channel. So as I was saying, one issue that arose was with my health. I couldn't stop sneezing all day and my sinuses and skin were constantly itchy. And this was after allergy season had been over for a while, so it wasn't the pollen. But yeah, I mean, I was in bad shape. I was physically uncomfortable basically the entire day. Eventually, I discovered that mold had grown around my sink, on my dish rack, in my bathroom, and more places. All the moisture my HRV was bringing into the house created the perfect conditions for mold to proliferate like crazy. And that, is the story of how I learned firsthand that ventilating can lead to unhealthy conditions in your home if not done properly. According to this scientific paper, mold growth isn't the only health risk posed by indoor air that's too humid, by the way. Allergenic mites, formaldehyde, sulfur and nitrogen dioxide, bacteria, and viruses all increase with humidity. So then what did I do? I got a large capacity dehumidifier, a Santa Fe Compact 70, which comes with a MERV 13 filter to prevent mold from colonizing it. The dehumidifier majorly decreased indoor humidity and in turn helped the mold issue. However, I had to turn off my HRV during hot and humid periods because it simply introduced too much moisture for the dehumidifier to handle. Ventilating less during very humid days certainly helped the indoor humidity situation, but I didn't like having to stop ventilating. And now I'll 
talk about the difference between ERVs and HRVs. So ERVs are quite a bit more useful than HRVs because ERVs recover both latent and sensible energy, while HRVs recover sensible energy only. I know, I know, what does that mean? Don't worry, I got you. ERVs transfer heat and moisture between their incoming and outgoing airstreams, while HRVs transfer heat only. Think about it, it's in their names. Energy recovery versus heat recovery. So both ERVs and HRVs regulate the temperature of the air that passes through them, but only ERVs regulate its humidity. For the reasons I mentioned earlier, I consider humidity control to be crucial for a healthy home in warmer months. A quick aside, HRVs can be sufficient for people who are only interested in recovering sensible energy, like maybe you live in a dry region like Arizona. And as I demonstrated in the DIY HRV video many of you are familiar with, it is feasible to build an HRV yourself because its main component is a heat exchanging core which can be constructed at home. But if you live in a place that gets humid and you therefore need to recover latent energy, an ERV is a healthier bet. I'm going to be straight up with you. An ERV cannot single-handedly dehumidify a home, but it can ensure that you don't overwhelm your dehumidifier by bringing too much water vapor into your home. Pro tip, ERVs also yield the added benefit of keeping moisture inside your home during winter, preventing it from getting too dry. Next, I'll explain why I don't believe that building an ERV is feasible. To put it simply, it is too complex and too expensive. Once you incorporate the labor and the parts, not to mention the expense and complexity of engineering a latent heat recovery system that safely modulates the moisture of the airstreams without flooding your home or causing mold issues, and defrost itself effectively, building a truly effective and safe DIY ERV is not feasible. In my opinion, at least. I hope someone proves me wrong, honestly. Building one yourself would probably cost close to, if not over, $1,000 anyway. So that's why I bought one. Not to mention the fact that the Brone AI series ERV I bought automatically balances the intake and exhaust air streams. The fact that such a device, which also controls humidity without the need for a drain, is $1,000 is actually relatively reasonable. Though yes, $1,000 is still a lot of money. So to summarize, controlling humidity when ventilating is extremely important for a healthy home, especially in warmer months. And ERVs can do that, but not HRVs. With ERVs, I'm at ease. HRVs made Alex sneeze. Santa Fe keeps mold at bay. Healthy air just makes my day. <laughs> <laughs> That being said, I don't feel like my DIY HRV build was a failure by any means. It could be a great option for someone who lives in a drier region or someone on a tight budget who accepts not being able to ventilate very much during hot and humid periods, or someone who lives in a really cold region, or just for someone who wants to build it for the sake of building it. If you learned something, go ahead and like this video and subscribe for more content like this. Please do comment as well because you guys know I love hearing from you. If you're able to donate to my channel, please do so at the link in the description. And by by the way, thank you to those of you who have donated. My fellow renegades, I salute you.